An American Broccoli in Key West. Written and read by Dale Dapkins. At the beginning of this book, we find an introduction written by Apple Devarian, who is the stepdaughter of Evex, who is the first broccoli plant to cross over and live the life of a human being. Evex accomplished this by ingesting a large quantity of energy drink given to him by two chickens, a rooster named Chainsaw and his girlfriend Lola. Other broccolis in the past have attempted this change of life, but because they consumed only miracle Grow and other generic fertilizers, it never worked out. And as you know, a broccoli plant is an annual who lives only one season. That said, here is the introduction which Apple has written. Frankly, I'm shocked at the negative reaction some readers have expressed. Seriously, this is not a controversial memoir. Okay, maybe my stepfather, whose name is Evex, gets a little hung up on the Armenian genocide. But that's only after he learned our ancestors were slaughtered by Turks. You see, Evex became very close to my grandpa, Vartan, while learning the oriental rug trade from him. There's lots of stuff about rugs in this book, but mainly it chronicles my stepfather's life. Lisa Monahan, my agent, warned me people would not take kindly to a 14-year-old girl. I'm 15 now, writing about politics and slaughter as if that stuff should be reserved for crusty old professors or horror movies. Anyway, I didn't technically write this book. You see, my computer and I comprised it using the latest Mac and Samsung auto-write programs. For those of you living in geezerland-assisted living facilities, or for those of you who are simply out of it, and that includes most people over 20 years old, LOL. I'm talking about the Mac 770 and the Samsung 5000 series Pros Pony Smart Write programs, both of which can gobble, digest, logistrate in less time than it takes to spit, boil an egg, grind out prize-winning literature. I mean, you can feed these programs up to 400 pages of raw verbiage including nearly undecipherable stuff like Dad's earliest diary entries when he was still learning to read and write. I use the SmartWrite Pros Pony program. Not just because it cut writing time down to almost nothing, but because I've learned the hard way to avoid criticism by roving gangs of elderly perfectionist grammar Nazis. Eat shoots and leaves, anybody? These folks are just dying, <laughs> a misplaced metaphor if I ever heard one, to pounce on any and every opportunity fish to whine about my typos and my mismangled Lisa, metaphors. who's my agent and publisher at Baboon and Gorilla Press, she says there's a bright side to all this negative attention. She thinks it'll help me go viral. Lisa, however, is not just concerned about criticism from the saggy, belly-breasted, chest-high, pants-wearing grammar police. She's more worried about the vegetarian crowd. Worried that you know, maybe they won't accept a broccoli plant protagonist who's a meat-eater. Lisa says with all the new food programs on TV now, it's gotten very political around America's dining tables. Viola Spooner on her show, The Feast and Vegan, went as far as to suggest I'm getting paid by the American Broccoli Foundation to make the whole thing up. Not to mention this angry guy that they sent to one of my readings dressed as a cauliflower shouting, <laughs> Hey, little girl, did you and your stepfather God, sleep together in, in the mind. same raised bed? <laughs> there has been one watershed moment after the next, and each one, altered our concepts of science, math, astrology, medicine, even botany. I'll list them if you want. Man discovers gravity. 
Man takes the first photograph. Man talks over radio waves for the first time. How about when Michael Jackson walked backwards in his, my, his white moon boots? And of course, now we're taking time to lay holographs on our telephones and instantly sending them back to mom via brain mail. I'm simply asking that you accept it as fact that the first vegetable really did in 2019 cross over to live the life of a human being experiencing all the sadness and joy that goes with human existential existence. That's what this book is about. It really happened. I witnessed it. I lived it. American Broccoli recounts the delight and passion of the first vegetable to experience the American dream and the American family. And I'll be the first to admit, this is an unlikely story. But Lisa says that's what makes this book special. The very wonder of the human condition with all the human feelings of love and hope viewed through the eyes of one sweet, innocent broccoli plant man who was my stepfather. Okay, to be honest, I believe my stepfather was autistic. Any doctor will tell you that many plants have Asperger's syndrome. Plants, of course, come from the soil, a place of very little emotional content. Unfortunately, annuals have no hope for a future because they live just one season. Imagine having no chance for building a better life. My stepfather asks that we not pity him. He says plants experience things few humans do, such as the physical life-giving joy of ingesting gel-soft, rich photon nourishment directly from the sun. He says photons are like tiny fisheye food pills. Huh. And then there's water. We take water for granted. He describes the satisfaction of slaking his thirst of every cell absorbing ambrosial quenching drops of rain dribbled upon his leaves by clouds. And though my father was an annual, he had perennial friends, trees and blueberry bushes, who described their lives to him. You might want to wrap yourself in a warm robe and snifter yourself some brandy while reading his description of one's chilly taproot growing numb from the penetrating cold as winter presses deep underground, putting you to sleep in your blanket of moss and leaf rot until you experience the joy of awakening in April to earthy, pungent comfort bursting forth into springtime warmth, your roots growing like weeds, stretching and thrusting microscopically through rich loam, dark and alive, as you renew symbiotic relationships with fungi tendrils, which wake up first, then rouse everyone else. And for all you fact checkers out there, I have a pant load of documentation you can sift through. Lisa insisted I keep good records, and I'm glad she did. Golden Blackman of Key West Eye Detective Agency collected boxes of pertinent paperwork. We have information up the yin-yang, because the broccoli in question learned to speak and read. And most important, he learned to write. He left behind a beautiful and extensive diary. Oh yes, this broccoli plant, my stepdad, he documented everything. Thus concludes the introduction to An American Broccoli in Key West by Dale Dapkins. Thank you.